A promising medical breakthrough in the U.S. could save thousands of lives each year. A new kind of cancer treatment which harnesses a patient's own immune system cleared a big hurdle Wednesday. If the drug is fully approved, it'll be the first gene therapy on the market. For more on this, we are joined by Jonathan Cohen. He's an assistant professor in the Department of Hematology and Oncology at Emory University's School of Medicine. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, I, I saw that one of the doctors who voted in favor of this treatment told the Washington Post that this is the most exciting thing I've seen in my lifetime. Do explain to us how this drug works and why it's so promising. So CAR-T is a group of new drugs that are pretty remarkable actually. They take the patient's own immune system, they, they harvest T cells, they then are manufactured and engineered in a way that they then recognize the cancer and are infused back into the patient where they then go and take out residual cancer cells. And it's really hard to overstate the impact that this new therapy will have on a, a lot of patients. So how far is it in the approval process or in other words when will patients be able to get it you know from their drugstores? So this is, a, this is a type of therapy that, especially at the beginning, will only be available in specialized centers, uh, many of which uh, currently uh, participate in bone marrow transplantation. And many of those centers are already offering this therapy through clinical trials. Our hope is that by later this year, some of these therapies will be available uh, uh, outside of a clinical trial uh, when we receive FDA approval. What about uh, eligibility? I mean, uh, does age affect just how successful this treatment could be, young versus older? Is there age limit? So remarkably, we've actually seen benefits from these therapies in a wide age ranges and across a number of different cancer types. So yesterday's meeting uh, discussed a lot about the effect in uh, young patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, mm -hmm. and that's really where we've seen some of the most impressive results. But we've also seen impressive results in uh, older patients, including those that have uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma and other cancer subtypes. So this could work as a cure? So it definitely, uh, in, in pediatric leukemia, appears to be a, a big step forward. And there are many patients that were on some of the initial treatments that remain in remission. Mm -hmm. And many of those patients had no remaining available treatment options. So we always get nervous about throwing around that word cure uh, because that's such an important word. But this definitely appears to be a game changer for a large number of patients. A game changer. Yes. And I guess it's too early to say if this could be a cure, right? Because it's only been uh, in, in clinical trials for, for so long. Exactly. It's very effective. It appears to, though, to be very effective in a large number of patients. Really? Well, the, yeah, a the game changer is a big deal. What about risks, though? I mean, for, for those, I mean, things can still go wrong. Yes, yeah, so we've learned a lot uh, uh, at our own institution and at other institutions about how to manage some of the side effects, mm -hmm. but some patients can have life-threatening toxicity, and so this is not a therapy that we take lightly. Anytime that you rev up the immune system and st you can stimulate inflammation throughout the body, which can lead to life-threatening complications, and we've also seen some significant neurologic toxicity. I see. So, but why leukemia patients? Are, are, are they best suited uh, to have the most effectiveness out of this drug? So we're actually investigating the drug in a number of subtypes, but leukemia was one of the first to be investigated because we were able to generate the, a product targeting a specific marker on the leukemia cells. So this first generation of CAR T cells targets something called CD19, which is typically present in patients that have acute lymphoblastic leukemia and other types of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Wow, really impressive and obviously really exciting, especially for cancer patients. Uh, we appreciate you joining us, Jonathan Cohen. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.